Back here on Radio Row Super Bowl 48 between the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos, and we actually ran into a former Denver Broncos player, and that's Byron Chamberlain, who has two Super Bowl rings. Byron, Zach Gelpier, how are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me on. Well, I appreciate having you on, and I'm looking at your fingers right now. Most people like to show off their Super Bowl rings. You're not one of them. Where are those rings? <laughs> you know what? They're, they're in my safe. I, I love them. But I'm not a big jewelry guy, man, so I don't, I don't really wear them. Or, but, but, you know, it's what they stand for and what they mean uh, to me is, is, is the most important thing. And, it, and what, that, what it means is, uh, you know, 53 guys in a locker room, you know, putting their ego aside, putting their personal agendas aside, and, and deciding that we're going we're gonna to pull for this one common goal and we're going to do whatever it takes to, to, to bring that Super Bowl trophy home. Let's also be real. When you wear those Super Bowl rings, it doesn't matter if this is your first time going to the Super Bowl or your 50th time going to the Super Bowl. Uh, people just look around and they say, hey, that guy's famous. Let me go talk to yeah, him. Yeah, it attracts a lot of attention, you know. So, you know, but the, the, the thing about it is, um, like I said, for myself, I, I'm just not a, I'm not a flashy guy. I'm not a, I'm not a jewelry type guy, man. So, uh, but, but I love them. They're, they're beautiful. They're, they're, they're extremely beautiful, and I'm definitely appreciative of them. What was your experience like with Andy Reid? You were telling us he was one of your college coaches, the former Eagles coach. Andy, Andy's a great guy, and Andy was a guy that I've known since I was 17 years old. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he was always uh, a, a teacher, a great teacher as far as a coach goes, and, and then a good friend. Uh, and uh, I knew his son Garrett really well as well. He used to uh, come to all our practices at, at University of Missouri. It was hard to, to see, you know, Andy lose him and, uh, but, uh, you know, I have so much respect for the guy. He's a great coach, and he, he had a remarkable year uh, in Kansas City uh, taking that, that team uh, to a 11-5 and five record in, in the playoffs. We're talking to Byron Chamberlain from Radio Row, and you played with John Elway. You saw him win two Super Bowls. Peyton Manning now is back in Denver uh, coming over from the Indianapolis Colts. He already has a Super Bowl ring on him, but he's in the later part of his career at 37 years old trying to get that second ring. Do you see any similarities between Peyton Manning and John Elway, two all-time great quarterbacks? Yeah, um, the, the first similarity, I mean, the obvious one is their leadership. They're incredible leaders, and uh, they have the ability – to, to, to galvanize men and to lead men uh, and, and, to, and do a great job doing it. And John now doing it from the front office. Uh, and, and, and then the, the, other, the other similarity is, you know, is Peyton at, at age 37, late in his career, trying to win a Super Bowl that, that will, you know, kind of cement his legacy. Uh, and, and I was in that situation with John. John was, a, a, at the time, a Hall of Fame player, uh, one of the best quarterbacks that, that had ever done it. But he was really trying to submit his legacy with the Super Bowl championship uh, at age 38, late in his uh, 37, late in his career, and uh, and I was privileged to be a part of that. Take me through a John Elway huddle when he comes on the field. What is that moment like when he's in the huddle and he's saying, "We're running this play, let's go, boom." <laughs> I'm sure there's no Omaha though when he's at the line of scrimmage. Well, the first thing everybody shuts up, you know, because the, the thing about it that I learned early on my rookie year is when you're in the huddle with Elway. It's Elway's huddle, and if if, if you're gonna uh, you're gonna be talking in the huddle, you're gonna be doing some things or whatever. He's gonna find a way to get you out of that huddle. Uh, that that's number one. Number two, uh, you know, John, you know, call the plays, but but the, he did have the ability to check things at the line. I mean, we went into the game and we'd have a play, but every play had about three or four different checks. He wasn't uh, as you know uh, demonstrative as as uh, Peyton in doing it. But, uh, you know, we had our keywords, and our, our, it definitely wasn't Omaha. <laughs> but, uh, you know, actually one of our checks was Denver and one was Seattle. Actually. Okay, it's that's crazy. Quite ironic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, John had the ability to, to do that, to be the offensive coordinator on the field and put us in the best possible plays, and, and that's what, what Peyton – uh, uh, does for the Broncos uh, nowadays. Did John ever express any interest of being in the front office at the end of his playing career? Did you ever talk to him about that? No, no, I never really expressed any interest. But it, but you know it, it makes sense. He's a, it, it's a natural fit, and especially for the Broncos. I couldn't see him in, in any other uh, uh, team's front office. Uh, and, and the thing about it is, is John, like I said earlier, brings that leadership ability those qualities and, and the other thing is he's a winner he's he's competitive and John is a winner he hates losing and I'll give you a quick a quick story about that 
John, man, he used to have this pool table in his house, and we'd all go over and play pool. But John never lost on this pool table, <laughs> never. Uh, one day, our backup quarterback, Bubby Brister, former Eagle, comes over, and Bubby beats him on that pool table. Well, the next day, that pool table's gone. John sells it. <laughs> it's out of there. I mean, that's, a, that's, I mean, that's just how competitive he is. That's how much he just hates losing. And if you look at him in the front office here for the Broncos, the moves that he's made. He's been very bold, very aggressive. Indy gets rid of uh, Peyton, and he goes after him aggressively. Uh, Wes Welker, bringing him in from New England. Uh, Sean Phillips, bringing him in from San Diego. And Sean's come in and had a great, great season for that Bronco defense. So uh, it just shows you that he's driven to win, and he'll do whatever he has to do and anything in his power to win. Two more with Byron Chamberlain, and then we'll let you go. New breed of tight ends in the NFL. You see players like Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham, and even Thomas at Denver. Does it ever amaze you how big these guys are and how quick they can move? <laughs> it really does, you know. And I look at it, and I was I was a former receiver, and that was the, the thing back then would to turn these bigger receivers into tight ends. That's what, uh, like a Shannon Sharp and like myself, uh, guys like that. Uh, and now, I guess I couldn't play now because I was never a former basketball player. Now they're looking at the hoop courts, and these guys are coming in 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, but, but you mentioned it. They're very athletic, and they, very, they can move. They, they move really well. And Julius is a guy who can flat out run. He runs a, a, as well as any receiver out there. So uh, you see him in that game against San Diego taking a little five-yard out, turning it up the sideline, going 74 yards. A touchdown a lot of, a lot of tight ends can't do that in this league so yeah they're, they're getting bigger man and and uh but i think they're gonna have to raise the uh the goal post man because they're all they're all dunking, they're the dunking ball. After the <laughs> <laughs> before we let you run give me one thing seattle has to do to win the game and give me one thing denver has to do to win the game uh the one thing seattle has to do to win the game is they've got to uh get marshawn lynch into beast mode Keep number 18 uh, they, on the sidelines. They, side they got to keep him. They got to take a page out of the 1990 uh, New York Giants and, and ground and pound, man, and shorten the game, keep Peyton on the sideline. For the Broncos, what they got to do is they have to uh, do a great job with their formations and getting their playmakers in position to make plays. Uh, you know where Sherman's going to be. You know where Chancellor's going to be. You know where uh, Earl Thomas is going to be. So that means you got to move your guys around. You got to split Julius Thomas out wide and put all three receivers on one side, or you gotta uh, just formation-wise get in a position where you can get your playmakers the ball. Excellent, excellent job. We appreciate a few minutes today. Thanks so much. And next time we see you, maybe I could try on one of those Super Bowl rings. Maybe you'll bring them back down to Radio Row next maybe year Maybe I in will Arizona. next year in Arizona, yes. Thank you. Byron Chamberlain, Radio Row, live in Philadelphia on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. We'll take a quick break and be back right after these short messages.